What started as adding simple wireless charging to the SP has evolved into this. The Game Boy Advance SP Expander version 2.0. This replacement rear shell allows for the addition of USB-C charging, a 3.5mm headphone jack, Bluetooth wireless audio, a much larger battery, and of course, wireless charging. This project is the result of many hours of design work from my friend Kyle, with perhaps a little design input from yours truly. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Before we get started, I just wanted to wish you all a happy holiday season. So today I'll be providing you an update on the SP Expander project. The primary goal of this project was to add modern features to this nearly 20 year old system. This latest iteration has a totally redesigned rear shell as opposed to the shell add-on of the previous version. The new shell has allowed us to add a larger battery and USB-C recharging capability, in addition to the Bluetooth and wireless charging which we added in previous episodes. We will continue to work and refine this design and I'll be providing periodic updates on this project so make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss anything. Of course, big shout out to my friend Kyle who worked tirelessly on this design. Please be sure to check him out on Instagram at Brinkeroff Systems. Okay, so we got a pretty long list of things we're going to be putting into this SP, so let's go over everything I'll be using for this build. Starting with the console itself. I'll be using this SP which I have already modded with an IPS screen. If you want to see how that's done, be sure to check out my tutorial on installing an IPS screen in the SP by clicking on the card at the top of your screen. The next item is also the most important, and it's at the heart of this mod, and of course that is the custom rear shell. Here you can see that it retains all the necessary design aspects of the original shell, but is quite a bit thicker. Here you'll notice a cutout for the USB-C port, one for the 3.5mm jack which we'll be adding in a future episode, and this opening here for a momentary switch that will activate Bluetooth pairing. The great thing about this shell is that it retains openings for the existing ports. Turning our attention to the inside, you'll notice that there are individual cubbies for each component. The USB-C module will reside in this area, here is where the Bluetooth module will be, and the audio jack will be in here once we get that part of the design finalized. How everything is installed will become clear during the tutorial. And lastly, on the rear of the shell is an indentation to accommodate a label. So as you can see, there is a lot going on inside this rear custom shell, but let's move on to the other components I'll be using. This here is the USB-C charging board. This is a very common off-the-shelf component. This will allow us to charge the SP without the need of a proprietary Nintendo charging adapter. This is the Bluetooth module that I'll be using. It's the same one I used in my previous Bluetooth mod video for the Game Boy Advance SP. I'll have a link to that video in the description below if you want to check that out. We'll also need this momentary switch in order to activate pairing mode on the Bluetooth module. Next is the battery. Since there is quite a bit of more workable space, I'll be using a much larger one. This 1600 milliamp hour battery, which is a little over double the capacity of the original, will give us more than enough playtime. Now, one of the key missing features on the SP was the standard audio jack. Unfortunately, we were unable to add this feature for this video since we had ordered the wrong 3.5mm jack. However, the shell has an opening that will accommodate this feature once we have sourced an appropriate part. And the last item we have is the wireless charging module. I've done several videos on this, and really, this is where it all started. The path to this mod began with wireless charging, and now here we are, adding so much more capability. This has really been a fun and exciting journey, but this is still only the beginning. Now be sure to stay to the end of the video so you can see what this thing can really do. Alright, without any further ado, let's get right into this mod. To get started, remove the battery door, battery, and six tri-point screws to remove the rear shell.
With the rear shell off, proceed to removing the three Phillips screws securing the motherboard. Gently unlatch the LCD ribbon cable. If your SP is IPS modded, be cognizant of the wire for the brightness control. Pre-tin the SO1 and SO2 test pads. This will be the source of our Bluetooth audio. Then solder a wire to each pad. Use some tape to help keep the wires in place during assembly. Go ahead and reattach the LCD ribbon cable. Put back your buttons, membranes, and speaker. And then reinstall the motherboard back into the SP. Here you can see how the wires were routed. Next pre-tin pin 1 and the ground shielding. Then solder three wires to the ground shield. And another wire to pin 1 shown here. Next let's solder these wires to the Bluetooth module. Solder the SO1 and SO2 wires to the pads labeled INR and INL, respectively. Now solder any two of the three ground wires to the pads labeled PGND and AGND. Solder the blue wire from pin 1 to the pad labeled 5 volts. And lastly, solder a new wire to the pad labeled CON. This will be attached to our momentary switch. Solder the other end of the yellow wire to any leg on the momentary switch. And then solder the third ground wire to the leg across from the yellow wire as shown. Be sure to check out my Bluetooth mod video for a much more detailed tutorial on installing this Bluetooth module. Link is in the description. Next, let's connect the wireless charging module. Solder the positive red wire to pin 2 and the negative copper colored wire to pin 6. Again, I highly recommend that you check out my wireless charging mod video for a much more detailed tutorial on how to install this. Again, link is in the description. Also, ignore the green wires. Those were installed for the 3.5mm jack before Kyle and I realized we ordered the wrong part. I removed these wires later off camera. Next, pre-tin the positive and negative terminal pads shown here which will be connected to our battery and USB-C charging PCB. Then solder a wire to each pad. And this is what it should look like. Be sure to take note of which wire is positive and negative. You don't want to mix these up. Now let's pre-tin the USB-C charging board. Pre-tin the inner two pads labeled B positive and B negative. Solder the negative black wire to be negative and the positive red wire to be positive. Then solder the negative battery terminal wire from the battery to the same B negative pad and the positive red terminal wire to the B positive pad. Fantastic! All our wiring is done and this is what we're left with. Now let's begin arranging everything into our new SP expansion shell starting with the wireless charging module. Lay it in like so and tape it in place. Then put the included magnetic spacer on top and fold the PCB over like so. I added some extra tape to help keep it in place. Now install the momentary switch into the slot and push it all the way in. Use an M4 set screw to secure the button in place. Next, place a small piece of VHB tape on the bottom of the USB-C port. Do not peel the red paper off. The VHB tape is used as a spacer to improve fitment. Once installed, again secure it with an M4 set screw. Now place the Bluetooth module into its cubby. Be sure to install the R and L triggers. Kyle cleverly designed the shell to hold the trigger springs which slide into this rail.
Once the triggers are installed, maneuver the battery into place and then carefully tuck away the wires so you can button up the shell. This will take some time and patience. There are a lot of wires here. Great with the shell together, fasten it in place with the five tri-point screws. and then add a label to finish it off. Fantastic. Wow, so that was a lot of wiring, but in my opinion, I think the end result is really quite something. It's not perfect, but we get a glimpse at the possibilities that this mod can bring. There is a lot jam packed into this SP and I'm really surprised that it all fits. Here you can see that it charges wirelessly and you can also charge it via the USB-C port. I'm just using a standard cell phone charger for this. When plugged in, you can see the faint glow of the indicator LED. Unfortunately, plugging it in via the USB-C port does not illuminate the SP original charge indicator LED. The Bluetooth module in the SP pairs to my Sony headphones quite easily. Now, one of the questions I was asked frequently in my Bluetooth SP mod video was whether or not this Bluetooth kit will pair with Apple's AirPods, and thankfully some folks were able to test it out, and unfortunately, they do not. So again, Bluetooth compatibility with this particular module is on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, as you can see here, the opening for the audio jack is not populated. Kyle's working to find a suitable 3.5mm port for this, which will be incorporated into a later revision of the shell. So that just about covers everything this SP can do with the expansion shell installed. Now, as with all my videos, let's break down the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, in addition to all the added capability from the components we installed, I think there are some great unique benefits this mod brings to the table. The one that is most apparent to me is the added thickness. While the increased size makes it somewhat less portable, it feels fantastic to hold. The added thickness is great for those with larger hands to help better grip the console. Overall, in my opinion, it's just more comfortable to hold. Another great thing is that the existing ports maintain their original functionality and can be used just as they were before. No inherent capability for the SP has been lost during this modification. And the last great thing about this mod is that it is entirely reversible. There isn't anything on this mod that is permanent and should you want to, you can desolder all the components and revert your SP back to its original state. Okay, now let's get into the cons. The first and most apparent one being the increased size. While there are some good things about this, as I mentioned previously, the additional thickness does make the SP slightly less pocketable. To me, it's a small compromise for all the added capability. And I typically don't carry this in my pocket, rather, I just stow it away in my backpack. Another con is the relative difficulty of this mod. There is a lot of wiring that needs to be done, which requires some fine soldering skills. This makes this mod slightly more difficult and less accessible to those who may want to do this particular mod. Next, there is just a mess of wires to get all of this working. I really didn't want to use magnet wire for this, but I think in the end, it would have been easier to close a unit if I had. And lastly, this is obviously still a work in progress. There are some key things missing, such as the absence of an RF shield, which leaves the motherboard exposed, as well as the lack of an audio jack. And the overall fit and finish needs to be refined slightly. While the project has come a long way, there is still a lot that can be improved, and both Colin and I will keep you up to date on this project. Again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those future updates. So there it is, an update for the Retro Renew project of the SP. We certainly came a long way, and I have Kyle to thank for getting us this far. Both Kyle and I will continue to improve upon this design. In the meantime, I'm curious about what you guys think. How do you like the design? Are there any features that you think are missing from this mod? What would you like to add to really make the expander kit even better? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You guys always have really amazing ideas, so let me know in the comments section below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.